Hey, everybody. Every week, we're going to interview somebody who's on the front line during this pandemic. And we have several people in our church that are working in the healthcare industry or first responders, other areas. And we thought it would be good for you to hear from them. And so today I'm here with Justin Sharp. Uh, Justin, why don't you tell us what you do? What is your what is your role? Well, I'm a lieutenant with the fire department, so I work on the fire truck, and I work here in town. And you know a little bit about the fire department for you know people that don't know. Uh, we work a 24-hour schedule, and then we're off 48, so it's on one, off two. So it, it adds a little bit of a different dynamic, especially in a pandemic type scenario where we're in close quarters with our coworkers for extended periods of time. So you're in, in Broken Arrow? Yes. Do you, are you at the same uh, firehouse every week or do you, do you rotate? I work, I'm on the, I'm pretty much at the same firehouse. I'm assigned to one in town and you know, there's different scenarios where they may travel me to run to another station. If there was a couple of different people off, it kind of just depends. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I'm at the, I'm at the same firehouse every third day. How long have you been a fireman? Well, coming up on 10 years now in December. Wow. Yeah, it's years. been a while. <laughs> I remember when you were going through your certification to try to get on it. It was when we, we, we just had just gotten here. So yeah, that's cool. 10 yeah, it years. started out, you know, December will be 10 years. Uh, started as a volunteer for about six or seven months in Jinx. And then when I got on full time, so that'll be 10 years this coming summer. Mm -hmm. So how has being a fireman changed uh, since the coronavirus started? It's actually changed quite a bit for us. Um, you know, in the fire service, we're pretty hands-on. You know, we're kind of compassion-driven. The idea is, you know, we signed up to help people. That's, that's pretty much what we do. Mm -hmm. We show up when it's everybody's worst day, you know, pretty much. And a lot of what goes into that is the care and training we take on you know, throughout our careers, and we do things a certain way, which involves all of us kind of hands-on right in there doing everything that we can to help anybody. And that's probably the biggest change we've seen right now is we have a lot of new protocols and kind of safety provisions put in place and mm -hmm. policies uh, really to try to protect the, ourselves as well as the, as the public. You know, that dynamic of us coming back and living in the firehouse in close quarters kind of puts us in a situation where if one of us gets it, it, it could just kind of run rampant. Um, right. Actually, this week, Tulsa had one one firefighter start to show some symptoms, and they quarantined. They had to quarantine 14 people because they've all been wow. all been there together. For, so uh -huh. probably the biggest thing you would notice, you know, if you were to call the fire department three months ago and you have any type of emergency, we're all going to come in there and do everything we can to help and help each other. Right now, though, it's kind of a, it's a weird dynamic for us, really, because, I mean, I'm on the fire truck, and for people that don't know, uh, the city of Broken Arrow doesn't have an IMSA. We run the ambulance. We're full, full ALS support, which just means advanced life support. But um, now the guys on the ambulance or the squad, we call it, in, in Broken Arrow, but they, they have to go deal with the patient first, and, and I have to stay in the fire truck with the guys that are in the fire truck. We don't even get out mm -hmm. unless it – merits uh you know additional interventions or mm -hmm. we need more hands on deck but the idea there is to not expose anybody more than necessary mm -hmm. and so uh, you know we've got all kinds of other protocols we have to wear but the guys on the ambulance for sure if it's a if it's a potential covid situation they've got to wear all the gowns the masks the goggles all that kind of stuff and if we have to get out of the truck and go assist we've got to suit everything up too. kind of delays our response a little bit mm -hmm. puts a little bit higher level of uh, tension <laughs> in the in the entire scene yeah but uh, probably another one on the patient side that that we're really not used to and then and the public is not used to with us either if we if we have a potential covid patient or anybody with flu-like symptoms or anything that checks any of the boxes when they're going through their dispatch um we're going to send a paramedic to the door who's basically going to tell them to come outside hmm. And we, that's usually we go in, we help, you know, we right. do whatever we need to do. We'll help get people situated. But now we don't send anybody in that house unless they're physically unable to get out. Hmm. Just try to limit that exposure. So it's definitely different. It's, uh, 
it's not really what we're used to. And we're, we're looking forward to this getting over or we can kind of go back to the, right. the normal routine of operation. Right. So based on what you've seen in your um, medical experience, what something that we as the public need to know or how can we keep ourselves safe? Well, you know, I don't know that we get any more information. We might get it a little bit sooner, um, but we don't really get any more information probably than the general public because the way this has gone, it's kind of been the health department and the state and the federal government have been so kind of on a daily basis. But mm -hmm. I'll just pretty much reiterate everything people probably already know. It's highly contagious. We don't really know what it, you know, what the numbers are. You really don't know because there's people that are asymptomatic. There's people that, that it can affect extremely severely, but it is a serious issue. So separation is important. You know, the clean hands, the whole, con you know, if you can wear a mask out in public, you know, a lot of people don't realize a mask, unless you're wearing an N95 or some sort of particulate filter mask, it's not necessarily going to prevent you from breathing in any, anything, but having a surgical mask or a mask that you see a lot of people making right now, what that helps is it keeps you from spreading particulates. So if you yeah. happen to be a carrier, uh, that's uh, and we're wearing those in the station 24 hours a day right now. And that's gets a real old real fast. I'll tell you, but right. <laughs> Um, that that's really more designed to keep you from spreading it if you are carrying it. And the main thing is just kind of be smart about stuff. Don't, you know, right for right now until the, until the officials and the experts tell us different, you don't need to be in large mass gatherings close together. You know, they're kind of lightening up things a little bit right now, but just kind of be mindful of the space and the separation and, right. and just be smart about it. Don't, uh, don't get in a, <laughs> don't go out to a nightclub with 500 people. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> we think they're keeping those closed up for a reason. So yeah. That's, that's totally a good thing. Yeah. So if, if somebody calls 911 in Broken Arrow, you guys, because you work in tandem with the ambulance system, you guys are the first ones responding. Yes. Yeah. We're okay. going to, and on our, uh, you know, our, operational capacity hasn't changed one bit. I mean, we're mm -hmm. running all the same stuff. You know, a lot of people think fire department and they think fires and car wrecks and traumatic injuries and all the crazy stuff. And we run all of that. But what, they, what a lot of people don't know is really about 80% of what we do is medical response. Uh -huh. But but we're still responding to all of it. It just kind of looks a little different right now. Right. And, um, you know, we're doing it every capacity we had before we have right now. We're not, we're not doing anything different. There's not one thing we're not going to respond to. Yeah. Uh, we just have to kind of take our precautions for both sure. ourselves and the public to, mm -hmm. to try to keep everybody as safe as possible. Right. So how can we as Bethany Church pray for you and for your, your coworkers? What do you call your coworkers? Your team? What, what is a, a squad? What is it called? Uh, crew. Crew? Uh, Oh, yeah, our crew, I guess that would be what you call. I don't, I don't know. Hey, you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So how can we uh, pray for you and your crew uh, during this oh, time? You know, really just, just, you know, pray for uh, some sanity during all the, all the, the prayer. You know, there's a lot of guys, you know, we're going to, we have to work. We have to do this stuff. We have called several COVID patients, you know, that there's no way around it. If somebody calls with, you know, we're going to go. Right. And, so there's always that um, that extra tension, especially for the guys you know that are really right up in it, you know, the paramedics and all those. Mm -hmm. There's that, you know, yeah, I wore my stuff. Did I get exposed? You know, they tell you five to ten days till you're going to know anything, and then you know those guys are going home. They're going home to their families. It's added a real level of stress and kind of tension, uh, mm -hmm. especially with the guys that are right there hands on. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, it hasn't affected what I do as much just because I'm not going in unless it's really bad. Right, and so. I've been kind of separated, but for those guys, I mean, I've, I'm hearing them. I'm seeing how they're reacting. Um, it's wearing on them, you know, cause yeah. it's just a different level of stress. So just you know, a little bit of, a little bit of grace and <laughs> sanity mm -hmm. in this time period will really yeah. help a lot, a lot, I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We will be praying for you guys and uh, your team around those things. <laughs> and, uh, Really appreciate your time today. And on behalf of Bethany, we want to say thank you for what you do for our community and uh, you and your family, what you do for our church. Uh, we love you guys and thanks for all thank you do. You very much. Glad to do it. Have a good day. Uh, you too, Josh.